All right, the title of the sermon this morning is Honour Thy Father, Honour Thy Father. Um, you know, normally on Father's Day, and maybe everyone in our church is expecting, you know, you come on Father's Day, you usually berate the fathers. Say, hey, come on guys, show thyself a man. Let's be a good example. Thought I'd switch it up this morning, you know, throw you a curveball. Today I'm actually going to preach something maybe a bit more uplifting, a little positive. <laughs> Today... I want to preach a sermon just reminding us to, you know, preach, to appreciate the fathers that God has given us. And obviously on Father's Day, we want to honour our Heavenly Father, which is unfortunate that, you know, on special occasions like Christmas and Easter, the one that people should be honouring and remembering, they do by dishonouring. <laughs> you know, the same on Father's Day. You know, it's, it's Father's Day. They're so focused on their earthly father that they forget about their Heavenly Father. But today <laughs> I'm talking about <coughs> our earthly fathers that God has given us and uh, appreciating the fathers that God has given us. You know, in, a, in the world today, the world is diminishing the importance of fathers. You know, you think about a lot of the sitcoms that come out and all the cartoons that come out, <coughs> making fathers out to be these idiots. You know, don't show respect to their fathers. Father doesn't know what's going on. Mum knows what's going on. Mum's the boss of the house. You know, people say, oh, let's ask the boss. They're not referring to dad. They're referring to mum. And even today, you know, they're, they're you know, demascul- demasculinizing, is that even a word, men? You know, they're becoming effeminate, you know, making them like, you know, e- saying like men and women are equal. Um, you know, it doesn't matter whether you have a father in the home or not. You know, a single mum can do just as good a job as as mom and dad. In fact, you don't even need a dad. You have two moms. You have a woman acting like a man, uh, raising children. So, you know, the, the, the world attacks the ways of God in all sorts of ways. Um, but, of course, attacking it in one way, removing the importance of a godly father. But fathers are important. Even if fathers are not perfect. You know, we're not perfect. You know, I try and get you guys to be better fathers. But even when fathers are not perfect, they should still be honoured, as God commands here, to honour thy father and thy mother, as we saw here in the fifth commandment. So that's the first thing I want to talk about. I want to talk about the fifth commandment of the Ten Commandments. (coughs) Exodus 20 verse 12 says here, Honour thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. So you notice there that that verse has a promise associated with it that is mentioned in Ephesians chapter 6. Now, the Ten Commandments are repeated slightly differently in Deuteronomy chapter 5. So we have Exodus 20, which is the one that everyone knows, the Ten Commandments, when the tablets were given. You know, God came, you know, came down with fire on the, on the mountain. They heard the Ten Commandments, and you see there in Exodus 20, they said <coughs> to Moses, you know, you know, you go up and speak with God, because if, if God continues to speak directly to us, we're going to die. So the Ten Commandments were quite special, because God actually wrote them on tablets with his own finger, but those were the ones that the nation of Israel actually heard directly from God, as opposed to the others that were given to Moses in the mount, and Moses delivered the rest in Exodus and uh, Deuteronomy and, and Leviticus and whatnot. Now, in Deuteronomy chapter 5, you see the Ten Commandments given a second time. And in and the fifth commandment here, Honour thy father and thy mother, mother, as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee, that thy days may be prolonged, and that it may go well with thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. So in Ephesians chapter 6, when Paul writes about these commandments as and is writing about you know children and you know um, how they relate to their parents in the beginning of ephesians chapter 6 look at what he says here he says honor thy father and thy mother which is the first commandment with promise so you see how there was all these commandments given by god but the first commandment that had a promise attached to it was the commandment to honour thy father and thy mother. What was the promise attached to it? That you will live long, that it may be well with thee, 
and thou mayest live long on the earth. So it's interesting that if we honor our father and our mother, it has an impact in the way we live. This is the promise that God has given in the Ten Commandments. So you can see here in Ephesians chapter 6, it's like a mix of Exodus 20. So Exodus 20 says that their days may be long, but Deuteronomy 5 is where you get the uh, that it may go well with thee. So Ephesians chapter 6 is <laughs> combining <coughs> combining those two commandments from Deuteronomy 5, Exodus chapter 20. Honour thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, thou mayest live long on the earth. Now God takes respect towards parents quite seriously. Now, obviously there's the commandment to honour fa thy father and mother. But look at these verses in Exodus 21. It says here, He that smiteth his father or his mother shall be surely put to death. Right? So if you strike your father or your mother, God saw this as a, as a crime worthy of the death penalty. This is how God sees respecting your parents. Right? So it's not that if you disrespect your parents. But we can see here where, that when you know, children go too far, and we're talking about older children here, we're not talking about little kids and, you know, having a tantrum. Right? We're talking about children disrespecting their parents to the point where they'll actually beat up their parents. You know? Exodus 21, look at what it says here, verse 17. He that curseth his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. So God put a breakup on the nation of Israel saying when these children, you know, these disobedient children go too far, we're talking about older, the you know, older generation, and how they treat their parents. <coughs> there's, a, there's a limit to how bad you can treat your parents. Now we lived in a quite privileged way, right? Where we had good upbringing, we were in a prosperous place, more upper, upper class, you know. But you see this in the world. You see people where they, they, they will beat up their parents. You know, and they, and they will abuse their parents, and, and that is not acceptable in the eyes of God. <clears throat> and here, what's cursing your father and mother? Is it just like swearing at them? No, no, cursing is, like when you, is, is stronger than just swearing at them, like we would say today. It's like wishing ill upon them. It's like wishing they would die, praying for their death. These are things that should not happen, and God takes very seriously. So God takes honouring your mother and your father quite seriously, to the point where there are laws like this in the Old Testament that would make a disobedient child worthy of death if he was to smite his mother or his father or even curse his father or his mother. It's re repeated in Leviticus 20 verse 9. For everyone that curseth his father or his mother shall be surely <coughs> put to death. He hath cursed his father or his mother, his blood shall be upon him. Now, did Jesus support these laws? Yeah, he did. He actually reiterated this in Matthew chapter 15 when he talked about honouring the father and mother. So, there is a dual meaning to honouring your father and your mother. Right? We're talking, you know, it's Father's Day today, so we're talking about fathers. One is, it's just showing them respect, showing them reverence. And the other is actually just fulfilling the obligations that are due to your parents as well. Matthew 15, verse 1. Look at uh, what Jesus teaches here. Then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees which were of Jerusalem, saying, Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? That's always a fitting one on days like today because people have these traditions and they end up transgressing the commandment of God, skipping church by holding to their traditions. For God commanded, saying, Honour thy father and mother, and look at this, he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. So Jesus obviously supported and believed <coughs> what God had written in the Old Testament regarding fathers and mothers, because he ties them together, where he says, hey, honouring your father and mother, and look at how God thinks about cursing father and mother, let him die the death. But ye say, 
Whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, It is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, and honour not his father or his mother. So you see how there is a dual meaning there with honour. That honour is not just about showing respect, being kind, being reverent towards your parents. It is also fulfilling the obligations that children have to their parents, which is to take care of them in their older age. So what he's refer referring to here is he's saying, they're saying it is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, right? That it's not due to them, right? So remember a gift is something that, you, that is not a debt owed to you. Right? When, uh, if you think about you know, Romans 4, right? To him that worketh not, but believeth. And we talk about you know, it's the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. So here is a child saying to their father and mother when they take care of them, oh, look, this is a gift. This is something that you've benefited, that you don't deserve. But no, it is something that is due to them as parents, that children take care of their parents in their older age. And we're not meant to have... Uh, you know, all this, this welfare state like we have today and where people are just depending on the pension and things like that. It's meant to be children taking care of their parents. <coughs> now, and he says here, in honour, not his father or his mother. So you see how there it's tied in with honour. That honouring your father and your mother is there taking care of them and fulfilling that obligation. He shall be free. Thus, have you made the commandment of God none effect by your tradition? So you see how there's that dual meaning there? So when we go to the Ten Commandments, honour thy father and thy mother, it is not just about respect. It is not just about reverence. Because here he's saying, by their tradition, by saying it is a gift wheresoever thou mightest be profited by me, they're not keeping that commandment. Oh, to honour thy father and mother. Honour not his father and his mother. You've made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. So that's a bit about the fifth commandment. God takes honouring your father and mother very seriously. We're talking about fathers today. So what are ways that you can honour thy father? So I'm just going to talk about three ways to honour your father this morning. One is <coughs> you honour him as the leader. Honour him as the leader. So what are ways that you can honour thy father as the leader? Well, children, as it says in Ephesians 6, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. So one way you honour your father as the leader, as a child, is you obey your father. You do as your father says. Now, as you get older, you know, and you're a man, the, the commandment is that children obey their parents. But as you get older, you know, it's different now because, you know, you're not living in your father's house, you're a man now, you're not going to just obey everything that your parents tell you to do. But what's the difference? You're going to then, you're still going to honour your father and mother. So, not only should children obey their father in order to honour their father as the leader, but it's also in the way that you treat your father. Right? So maybe you're older now, so you're not necessarily obeying everything that your father tells you to do, but you're still honouring your father, you're still showing him the reverence as the patriarch in the family. So 1 Timothy 5 here, look at what it says here, rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father, the younger men as brethren. So in 1 Timothy 5, it's referring to how people relate to each other within the church. But notice how it says when you talk to older men, how should you treat them? You entreat them as a father. So the assumption there is, is that you already respect your father, you respect the position that your father has, and there's a way that you approach your father, and, it, and the Bible's teaching us here that that's the way you, you entreat older men in the church as well, that you give them that respect, the fact that they're older, the fact that they are a leader. Proverbs 23, 26. Look at what it says here. My son, give me thine heart and let thine eyes observe my ways. So another way you can honour thy father as a leader 
is that you follow his example. You know, look at the way he lives, look at the way he carries himself, look at the way he speaks, and follow that example. When you follow that example, you're honouring him as a leader. Now, no Father's Day sermon will be complete without going to some verses on wives. <laughs> some need to their husbands. <laughs> so, we're going to look at that too. First Peter 3. First Peter 3. It says here in verse 5, For after this manner in the old time, the holy women also who trusted in God adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands. So, just like children can honour their father, you know, wives can help with the way they treat their husbands and show them the honour that God expects them to show them. So you can see here that the, the women of old, the holy women of all time, they were godly. They adorned themselves in a certain way. They trusted God, but one thing also, they were in subjection unto their own husband. So one way you honour you know, the father as the leader, also the wife being a good example to the children, honouring the father, right, and being in subjection unto the husband. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, look at this, calling him Lord. So you see how there, there is an outward showing of the authority that the father has in the family, right? But today what happens, you know, authority of the father is undermined, you know, it, 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 the, the, the prevailing attitude and stereotypical joke is always, oh, got to ask the boss, got to ask the boss. But is, is that the sort of culture that you're creating in your family as a wife? You don't want to create that sort of culture. You want to create the culture like we see here with the holy women of old, they were in subjection to their own husbands even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. See, she openly acknowledged him as the boss, and that is one way that the father is honoured in the family and will be honoured also amongst the children as well. <clears throat> as long as you do well and are not afraid with any amazement. Ephesians 5. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church and he is the saviour of the body. So what are we talking about? We're talking about how to honour thy father as the leader. So we're talking about if, if you honour somebody as the leader, then you submit to them, you get behind them, you follow them. So we talk about children obeying their parents, children honouring father and mother, wife submitting unto the husband. And this is how you honour somebody as the leader. I mean, are you honouring somebody as the leader if you don't follow them, right? if you don't do as they ask when they've set a rule? Are you honouring them if you know, you know, the, you know, you're not in subjection to them? I mean, it's like God. I mean, are we honouring God <coughs> when we break his commandments? You can't say you're honouring God and in the same breath break his commandments because when you break his commandments, you're dishonouring God, right? When you don't follow him. So in the same way, if we want to honour thy father as the leader, then there needs to be some subjection there. There needs to be some following there. There needs to be some reverence there. Otherwise, you're not honouring your father as the leader. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church and he is the saviour of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Now, why are husbands... The leader. Well, one of the reasons is, and it goes on in Ephesians 5, because husbands are responsible physically and spiritually for the family. So wives being in subjection to their husbands, I know it's not a popular thing in the world today, but you know, this is where we are a light in this world. You know, we don't want to follow the ways of the world and you know, you know, maybe the world denigrates fathers, the world puts women in charge, like we talked about in the beginning, the world doesn't think, oh, you know, you even need fathers to raise, you know, children. But that's not how it ought to be in God's house. That's not how it ought to be amongst us. You know, we want to set that example for the world. And this is how women can set that example to the world. I think it's great that sometimes there are women on social media and things like that, you know, speaking out 
against, you know, the, the prevailing thought of just like dominant women and all, you know, and women can lead the home and women are in charge, all these sorts of things. But they're actually setting the example of being a submissive wife and doing it joyfully and encouraging other women to do the same, right? And seeing the value of that because that's one way they can be a light in the world. And it's, you know, it's a, it's a controversial thing these days because of all the equality that people talk about. But the roles are not equal. You know, they're not the, they're not the same. They're different and they, and they hold their place in God's model. <laughs> but the reason why man is in charge, we need to honour thy father, is because he is responsible for the family. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. So you see how the husband is responsible for protecting the family. So if you are responsible for protecting the family, this is one thing maybe, this is one thing Andrew Tate gets right, right? So he's not, he's not all wrong. But he talks about, you know, you know, the man being in charge because the man has to protect his family. So how can you protect your family if you have no authority to make decisions for them? So because the man is responsible for protecting the family, not only physically, but spiritually, he is given the authority from God in order to make those decisions. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. That he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle <coughs> or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So you see how there, there's not only the physical protection and he gave himself for the church but there's also the spiritual protection of being responsible for the spiritual well-being of his wife and his family not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing but that it should be holy without blemish so ought men to love their wives as their own bodies he that loveth his wife loveth himself so what's the lesson here in this first part you know children submit to your fathers Or give him the reverence due to the position, both children and wives. Now, <clears throat> we don't just follow our fathers, submit to our husbands into sin. Because why? Romans 13, 1. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. So, yes, we don't follow the authority in our lives into sin because we keep God's commandments first. But there is much life wisdom to be learned from our Father's example, and, and it shouldn't be discounted just on the basis that they're not perfect. You know, maybe you've got a father that's an unbeliever, maybe you've got a father that's not perfect, you know, you've got a husband that's not perfect, but that doesn't mean there isn't wisdom in following that example, obeying God, and still things that you can learn from that example. So this is why it's important that men are involved in their family and that they, they have fathers, because fathers, just by being a man, teaches young men how to be a man, how to look, how to dress like a man, how to not be effeminate, you know? And, and you see the effects of fatherless homes on social media. You know, where you've got all these men probably wearing makeup, you know, making their TikToks, doing their dances, you know, having their hair all fancy. And, you know, and it's the same with women as well. You know, you see like women on TikTok and on social media just like flaunting their bodies. And this is the symptom of a society void of fathers, right? It's not showing them how to be a man, how to be respectful. Because, you know, when you're an older man, you find this stuff silly. You know, only when you're a young man, you think this stuff's cool and you want to be like the crowd, you want to be like the Hollywood superstars. But then when you get older, you just think that stuff's just all silly, you know, and it's just <laughs> very immature. So older fathers have that sort of example to, um, to their families. So that's one way you can honour thy father. <coughs> you honour your father as a leader. Second way you can honour thy father is you honour him as a teacher. As a teacher. You know, men generally want what's best for their children. They want what's best for their family. They have things that they want to teach. 
that they want to they, they impart. 1 Thessalonians 2.11, As ye know how we exhorted and comforted and charged every one of you, as a father doth his children, that ye would walk worthy of God, who hath called you unto his kingdom and glory. So you see how that it's normal for a father to challenge his children. And that, that tends to be the case. If you think about the stereotype of a father, fathers tend to be harder on their children. Fathers tend to challenge more. And that's something that fathers bring to the table. And when you honour your father as the teacher, you'll respect the wisdom that he's trying to give you and not resent the wisdom that he's trying to give you or ignore the wisdom that he's trying to give you. Now, many <coughs> of the Proverbs, now the Proverbs is a book of wise sayings. And all throughout the Proverbs, we're just going through the book of Proverbs now, that's what made me think of this, reading through the book of Proverbs with my family. So many of the Proverbs is wisdom from a father to a son. Like just the first seven Proverbs, like just start like that. I mean, obviously the very first part of Proverbs 1 is just talking about Proverbs in general. Then it gets to verse 7. I'll show you, we're going to go through Proverbs just 1 to 7, just the beginning part. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. My son, hear the instruction of thy father and forsake not the law of thy mother. So you can see how you honour thy father as a teacher, where you strive to actually learn from the wisdom that he has hear the instruction of thy father for they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy neck unto thy head and chains about thy neck so that's talking about the you know making sure we hear the instruction of the father proverbs 2 my son you see here again it's from a father to a child my son if thou wilt receive my words and hide <coughs> my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom, and apply thine heart to understanding. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge, and liftest up thy voice for understanding. If thou seekest her as silver, and searchest for her as for hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord, and find the knowledge of God. So we see here, we see here a father encouraging his child to seek for wisdom, right, and to be wise. Maybe, you know, from our own experience, is because as you get older, you realise the mistakes you make in your life. You don't want your children to make the same mistakes. So, you know, he's saying, hey, here from my experience, gain wisdom, gain understanding. You know, it's going to be good for you, right? It's going to, like I said, it's going to be like an ornament about, about thy head, ornament about thy neck. Proverbs 3. Yes. My son, forget not my law. So you see now there's the encouragement to, to embrace them, not forget them, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. See, they're going to do you good. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Right? Don't forsake mercy and truth. Don't, don't let them get away from you. Bind them about thy neck. Like we talked about last week, where it's just natural for there to be a decline. Notice how he says here in verse 3, Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Don't let them get away. Right? Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart so shalt thou find favour and good understanding in the sight of God. So Proverbs 3, 1 to 4, peace and favour. Proverbs 4, Hear, ye children, the instruction of a father, and attend to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. Proverbs 5, My son, attend unto my wisdom, and bow thine ear to my understanding, that thou mayest regard discretion, and that thy lips may keep knowledge. For the lips of a strange woman drop as a honeycomb, and her mouth is smoother than oil. But her end is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death. 
her steps take hold on hell. You know, this is the, one of the problems with the absence of fathers, is people get into fornication. You know, without fathers, you know, you can see like women go and they you know, seek the attention of a man, you know, men go and be whoremongers because they don't, they're not taught to respect women like a, like a husband would respect his wife. And as they get older, you know, and they learn a bit of life wisdom, you know, here's a warning here to young men and to children to say, hey, be careful of the strange woman. So there's, there's many things we can learn there. We're not talking just about that today, but that is Proverbs 5, 1 to 5. He's, he's wor warning his son about the dangers of fornication. Proverbs 6, 1. My son, if thou be surety for thy friend, if thou hast stricken thy hand with a stranger, thou art snared with the words of thy mouth. Thou art taken with the words of thy mouth. Do this now, my son, and deliver thyself. When thou art come into the hand of thy friend, go humble thyself, make sure thy friend, give not sleep to thine eyes, nor slumber to thine eyelids. Deliver thyself <coughs> as a roe from the hand of the hunter and as a bird from the hand of the fowler. So what is Proverbs 6? What is a father warning his son about here? The, the, the contracts that you enter into, the agreements that you make. He's saying, beware of these things as you don't snare yourself into agreements that you shouldn't be a part of. And number seven, this is the last, uh, uh, well, this is not, sorry, this is not the last one we'll look at, but one where about a father to a son. Proverbs 7, 1. My son, keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee. Keep my commandments and live and my law as the apple of thine eye. Bind them upon thy fingers, write them upon the table of thine heart. Say unto wisdom, thou art my sister, and call understanding my kinswoman. So what is this one referring to? This one is referring to appreciating the wisdom that has been given to you from your parents, you know, and, and holding them dear. That's why it's saying, bind them upon thy fingers, write them upon the table of thine heart, you know, internalize them. Say unto wisdom, what is it? Thou art my sister, and call understanding thy kinswoman. What is that? It's like having a close relationship with actually internalizing them and taking them to heart, right? Holding them dear, like a sister, right? Whereas sometimes when we get wisdom from our father, we don't appreciate it. We don't always value it until later on in life we realize, you know what? They did actually know what they were talking about. Proverbs 13.1. There's some more Proverbs just on hearing the instruction of the Father, how we can honour our fathers as teachers, as we try and learn from them. A wise son heareth his father's instruction, but a scorner heareth not rebuke. Proverbs 15.5. A fool despiseth his father's instruction, but he that regardeth reproof is prudent. So, what's the lesson here? You know, there's a lot of life lessons to learn from your father. And I think you should seek to learn what you can from them. So you can honour your father as a teacher to try and learn from him. I'm sure there's a lot of wisdom he wants to impart to you. And if you try and learn from him, that's one way you can honour him as a teacher. You know, fathers want what's best for their children. And like I said, they'll often challenge their children more so than their mothers. Now, teaching is not just about just instruction, but there's also correction as well. Ephesians 6, verse 4. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. So there is the instruction, there's the nurture and the care, but there's also the admonition, there's the correction. Like we read about in the Bible, you know, and disciplining your children with corporal punishment, with spanking. Hebrews 12. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. <coughs> <coughs> My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. So this sermon is not about spanking. Obviously I believe in spanking. The point I want to draw out here today, because we are talking about honouring thy father as a teacher. Part of teaching is challenging your children rebuking your children, right? Correcting your children, disciplining them. Smacking your children is part of it as well, right? As it talks about chastening. 
And the way you can honour your father as a teacher is you don't despise the chastening. Like it says here, God, as our Heavenly Father, chastens us, rebukes us, and people can get bitter and resentful, or they can honour their father as the teacher and not despise the chastening of the Lord, don't faint when you're rebuked of him, and realise that you are receiving this rebuke and this chastening because your father loves you and is trying to correct you. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. So do not despise the correction from your father. You know? And our heavenly father is perfect, but our earthly father is not always perfect. Right? So our earthly father sometimes gets things wrong, sometimes may overreact. But how can we honour our fathers as the teacher in the house is we do not despise the chastening of our fathers. Don't just, we don't faint when we are rebuked of them. And the last one, <coughs> I think the way we can honour our fathers is we honour our fathers as the provider. As the provider. <coughs> now the Bible says here in 1 Timothy 5, it's, you know, it's the responsibility of the father to provide for his own. 1 Timothy 5, but if any provide not for his own, especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. And most fathers do fulfill this responsibility. I mean, in our church and in your lives, I'm sure your father fulfilled this responsibility to provide for you. Now, the Bible says here in 2 Thessalonians 3, it talks about laziness. For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any should not work, neither should he eat. So one thing I think sometimes we take for granted as children, you know, and when you were growing up, is the fact that you were able to eat. You know, why were you able to eat? You were able to live in a home, things provided for you, because your father worked hard to provide for his family and provide for the things that you have. But we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busybodies. Now them that are such we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ that with quietness they work and eat their own bread. 2 Corinthians 12 says here, Behold, the third time I am ready to come to you, and I will not be burdensome to you, for I seek not yours but you. For the children ought not to lay up for the parents, but the parents for the children. So you see how the parents provide for the children? Your father would have also provided for you when you were growing up, <coughs> if he fulfilled his role as father and as worker, as most of our fathers would have. And look at what he says here. He says, And I will gladly spend and be spent for you, though the more abundantly I love you, the less I be loved. So Paul is obviously addressing some of the issues going on in the Corinthian church here. But what I want to draw out of this passage is just that principle of, you know, fathers working to provide for their children, to provide for their families. And more often than not, they do it gladly. You know, if it says verse 15, like Paul, they would have that attitude of, you know, they're glad to go out and work hard and see their family enjoy the fruits of their labour and be provided for and have the things that they need. So one way you can honour your father is that you simply appreciate the work that he does to provide for you and your family, right? Um, for children as well. So what's the lesson here? You know, appreciate the work that your fathers do and that your fathers did, you know, now that we're a lot older, to provide for what you have. You know, when I think back at like even, you know, my, my own dad, you know, just thinking of these lessons. You know, my dad taught me a lot of things. Um, Elizabeth knows my parents. She, she jokes, you know, like from my dad, you know, I probably got my, you know, organisation and my rational thinking. Uh, you know, my dad was a very uh, organised person, he was a very hard-working person. You know, my dad's not perfect, my dad's not a believer, but you can still learn a lot from your parents and take from that example. My mum is probably where I get my, uh, let's say, determination <laughs> in things. So you can see that I'm like the culmination of my parents. Well, my, my, my dad also showed me how to work hard as well. He was a very hard worker. 
and um, he worked very hard and provided for the family. And you know, coming from a split family, it made things even more expensive with all the court cases and things like that. You know, but I think we need to appreciate what fathers do in order to provide for their family. I think it's, it's very easy for wives, for children, to complain about maybe about their fathers. But you should, we should also remember the things that fathers do for their families as well. And you know, as children, we don't always appreciate how difficult it is to make money. And you know, in today's day and age, it's even more difficult. You know, with interest, you know, interest rates going up and the you know, cost of living and the overtaxation and the overregulation that's going on and how expensive things are. Sometimes we complained about things, you know, in our childhood. But now when we reflect on them as adults, we realize, you know, you had it, you had it pretty good. You know, we didn't, we didn't worry about where our next meals were. You know, we all you know, had a bed to sleep in. We all had a house to sleep in. And many, for many of us, that was provided for, to us by the hard work of our fathers. So that's what I wanted you to reflect on today in today's sermon is, yes, you know, let's honour our Heavenly Father. Yes, men, we've got to be good leaders. We've got to be good teachers and we've got to be good providers. But today, what I wanted the focus to be on is on the followers. The wives, the children, us even as children of our more elderly parents. How do we honour them? Well, Hopefully I gave it, you're giving you some ideas today. You can honour them as the, the leader. You know, children, submit to your fathers. Those of us who are older, hey, give your father the reverence due to him as the patriarch of the family. Number two, you know, honour thy father as the teacher. You know, there's a lot of life lessons you can learn from your father. Seek to learn them. I'm sure any man, you know, <coughs> when he sought for his advice, is willing to give it. And he feels, you know, you know, when people come to you for advice, you feel like, oh, you've got some value to give to them. You're honouring them as the teacher. And lastly, honour them as the provider. You know, appreciate the work that he does to provide for the things you have. And, you know, on this Father's Day, for those of us who are older, you know, appreciate your fathers for the things that they did do for you as you speak to them today and spend time with them. So not only is it a good thing to do, but <clears throat> it is something commanded to us of God. And I'll just finish here, Proverbs 20, verse 6. Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness, but a faithful man, who can find? So, you know, it's, it is a rare thing to find a faithful man. And yes, you know, even the fathers of our church, you know, we're not perfect, but I think you should still appreciate the fact that it's a rare thing. You know, you're in church on a Father's Day. You know, you're in church consistently. You know, your children are being raised up in the ways of the Lord, and that's a rare thing. I think today is a day where you should you know, remember that, appreciate that you have that sort of father in your life you know, trying to honour God to the best of his ability. All right, let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word. Thank you for the fathers that we have in our lives. You know, Lord, our earthly fathers are not perfect like you. But Lord, we pray that you'll help us to honour our fathers as you have commanded us and appreciate the things that they do bring to our lives. The example, the wisdom, the life lessons, and the, 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 the things that they provided us in our childhood and they provide for us now. So we thank you, Lord. Help us to be uh, good children of you, but also children of our earthly fathers as well. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.